Welcome back, 4-Hers. We're going to cover a couple orders during this presentation. We're going to cover Thysanoptera, which is an intermediate order, and then we're going to cover all of Neuroptera, which it, uh, includes um, only one for juniors, and or I'm sorry, two for juniors, and one for intermediates, and four for seniors. So Thrips is an intermediate only, intermediate and senior, um, insect, juniors, you guys don't necessarily have to know these for the contest. Thysanoptera is the order. They're called thrips. They're found on flowers and they're considered variable. They're not um, truly a pest or, or not a pest. It just really depends on the situation. So they're variable. When they are a pest, they can cause damage to roses, especially. You can see that bronzing that they, that they make. They feed on pollen and so they're kind of a pollinator, but as a side effect, they'll feed on the edges of the petals of flowers. Um, this is what they look like. They're very, very small. If you tap a flower, you might see some splinters um, fall onto your hand, or you can tap it onto like a light sheet of paper, and these little splinters might move a bit. Those are thrips. Uh, thrips is a singular and a plural term, so one, it's one thrips, and it's 20 thrips. Um, it, thysanoptera means fringed wing, and you can see that they have really hairy, thin, thin wings, but very, very head hairy. Um, so itty bitty little teeny tiny things. When you're given a picture of them, it's going to just be a little tiny dot compared to um, a butterfly or something else to give you a comparison. Um, and if you have it for the contest um, at the state level, it's gonna, it's going to be most likely on a slide under the microscope because they're so small you can't really make out details. Otherwise, that's how they're supposed to be generally preserved. All right, so now we're going to move on to Neuroptera. Neuroptera is the first order that we have looked at where you have a complete life cycle. Neuropterans are made up of Dobson flies, and that's new for 2018, 2019, because Dobson flies used to be their own order, and now they've been put under Neuroptera, and it seems like they move back and forth all the time. Um, but currently, taxonomists agree that they are in the order Neuroptera. So Dobson flies, antlions, owl flies, lacewings, and mantispids, which are a really cool bug. The host for these guys are either going to be found on plants or they're going to feed on um, other insects. Um, they are um, beneficial. All of them are beneficial, so that makes it easy. And every single one of them has a complete life cycle. The mouth parts are... Chewing for everybody also, which is nice. If we look back at Thysanoptera, their mouth parts are actually called rasping. So it's kind of like um, if it's like when your scissors get messed up and they slit and they and they snap back into the right shape. Well, they just kind of rasp and they and they tear at the plant tissue and then they kind of eat what oozes out. So Dobson flies are a neuropteran that everybody needs to know, juniors, seniors, and intermediates very big, like two or three inches in size. All neuropterans are, are characterized by these really um, membranous wings with a lot of dashes and a lot of veins going through them so that they all look very lacy. So those are all going to be neuropterans. Um, the one on the left, this is the male. The one on the right is the female. What's interesting is that the male has these modified mouth parts right here, right? But he can't bite. The female has regular mouth parts for, for biting and for feeding, chewing on food, and she can bite, and it's very, very painful. Um, the larvae are called helgramites. We use them for fishing. Um, we also, uh, they're also an indicator of pretty good water quality. So um, a beneficial insect, very, very big, found around water. Um, the host is going to be a stream. Chewing mouth parts, complete life cycle. The other one that our juniors need to know, along with everybody else, are antlions. And antlions are a fun bug. They have long and clear wings. They kind of look like damselflies, but the antenna are different if you look at them. Their antenna are longer and they're kind of kinked over at the, at the end. They're knobbed. These guys are attracted to lights if you want to collect them at night. What's interesting about them is that the mother lays the eggs in the soil the thing that hatches from the egg is what we usually call an antlion. It's this little kind of fat thing with these big mouth parts, mandibulate mouth parts. And they will live in these little burrows, craters in the ground. And if you dangle things over it, 
the mouth parts. You'll see them come up and snapping because they're trying to feed on what, what falls in. And, and they make this in real sandy, loose soil so that if you're a little ant, you crawl across, you fall in, you can't get your way out, and they jump out and they, uh, and they feed. Once they've eaten enough food as a larva, they um, will, will make a pupa, and they'll take debris and pebble, little tiny pebbles and pieces of, of soil and sand, and they'll make a pupa case out of it, and then they emerge as this adult. So they're found, the adults are found on plants. If you go around on a warm evening and you, in the fall time especially, and you kind of knock your plants, you'll see these things floating out of it. But I also actually see them in the summer and springtime also. Beneficial because it's a neuropterin, chewing mouth parts because all neuropterins have it, and complete life cycle. Now, um, I'm going to skip down to, if you're a junior, we've covered the only two neuropterins that you guys need to know. If you're an intermediate, you have one more neuropterin to know, and then you guys can log off. And that neuropterin is called the green lacewing. Green lacewings are super, super common. You usually see them at, light, at lights at night, <clears throat> but you can also see them if you, again, if you bump bushes and things, you'll see them kind of flying off. Their host is considered insects because they feed on insects, both as the larva, like in this bottom right-hand picture, feeding on some aphids, and also as the adult, they're predatory. But they're really, really ferocious as the larva. So ferocious that the mother has to lay her eggs on these little stalks. And if you guys go looking around um, your door frames or your patio furniture or your mailboxes, I promise you'll probably come across some of these lacewing eggs. She lays them on these little stalks because the first one that hatches would eat everybody else if she laid them all flat. But when they're up on that stalk, they're, I guess they're more um, worried about getting down and getting out of there instead of feeding on everybody. So they, they have a better chance of survival by being laid on those stalks. Adults also feed on pollen and nectar. So all around, they're just a really cool, beneficial insect. Um, rarely will you see the adult, I mean, rarely will you see the larva. Even rarer will you see a pupa. You often, though, see the eggs and you see the adults flying around. So beneficial, chewing mouth parts, the host is going to be an insect because they feed on insects like crazy. Okay, so if you're an intermediate, you guys can um, go ahead and log off if you want to, because now we're just going to be looking at um, four, no, I'm sorry, three um, neuropterins that are only for seniors. And one of these is the brown lacewing. So seniors, when a green lacewing dies and it's an old specimen, it's going to look like a brown lacewing. So you're just going to kind of try to guess on whether it's brown or whether it's green. And I don't even know a good way um, for me to identify the difference between them, but they look like a green lacewing. They're just brown. So these guys also are beneficial. Same kind of um, thing, you know, they do the same kind of thing that the green lacewing does, but these guys especially love to eat aphids. And the larvae, again, are predaceous. They have chewing mouth parts, complete life cycle. All of them are beneficial. Um, probably, in my opinion, the coolest insect that is out there is this thing called a mantispid. And the mantispid looks like a really weird praying mantis. Um, it mimics praying mantises, and it also mimics wasps. And there's even this one species that is like, kind of looks like a, um, like a paper wasp mixed hybrid with a praying mantis. But they're not. They've got a complete life cycle. Praying mantises do not. They have an incomplete life cycle. Um, they're found in different areas. While they're both beneficial and they both have chewing mouth parts, their life cycle is completely different. So they're not the same thing. The other big difference is that their, their wings are, are different. They're a little more clear than a praying mantis is. And where their arms are held, on a praying mantis, they're held further away from the head. And on a mantispid, they're held right up underneath the head. These guys are not necessarily rare. They're just very rarely seen. So if you collect one, they're, they're actually a really, really special specimen to have in your collection, and you want to take really good care of it if you can. Um, the hosts for these guys are woodlots. They are beneficial. They have chewing mouth parts. They have a complete life cycle. And then the last neuropterin that we have for seniors are owl flies. Owl flies look kind of like an antlion, but their, their um, head is a lot fatter 
and their antenna are so much longer, right? So they look like a really, really long antenna damselfly maybe. Um, so we call that a long clubbed antenna because it has a little ball at the end that's called a club. So think of like, um, I don't if y'all ever watched Captain Caveman or if you think of like a caveman's cl or a club or a baseball bat, it gets larger at the end and that's why it gets that that name. Um, on for owl flies, they're similar to antlions, but instead of digging pits, they just lay on the surface of the ground and wait for the prey to kind of crawl in front of their face. So they're um, different in that respect. Owl flies are are found um, according to this at night at lights. Um, according to the um, 4 H material, they're found at lights, of course, because they're neuroptera and they have chewing mouth parts, they're beneficial, and they have a complete life cycle. So that's the end of um, what we're going to cover for Thysanoptera and Neuroptera. The next thing that we'll talk about will be all of our Coleoptera or, or our beetles.